the last time we spoke, beginning of term, I spoke to you all about developing self-respect and how that can be very much based around the need to be successful. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is um, how sometimes we're stopped from being successful because of barriers that get in our way. Now, I just want to share with you some of the um, issues and some of the barriers that some people have managed to overcome. I actually used this last week with year 11. This um, quote. And I think it sums things up very, very nicely. Just have a quick look at it. What it says is you're not given a good life. However, you're not given a bad life. The only thing, sit up please, the only thing you are given is life. That's what you get. You get a life. Then he goes on to say, it's then down to you whether that life becomes a good life or a bad life. You're given life, then your call whether that life is good or bad. Now some of you might be sitting there and thinking, oh yeah, what chance have I got? Well let me share one or two things. I've never done this before. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I had to go home last weekend because my mum was 87 years old, it was her birthday. So I went home. That's my mum's house. My mum lives there. It's a two bedroom council flat on an estate in North Tyneside that is probably five times bigger than West Earlham and Larkman estate. It's a huge council estate. And that's where I was born and that's where I was brought up. My mum and dad were good people. But they weren't what you call, would call educated. They had lived as young people through the Second World War. And schooling was really iffy then, as you hope you can imagine. And my mum was a shop assistant and my dad helped build ships in the shipyards. So the only real opportunity I had to make my life into a good life was through my school. So when I was at school, I took and was encouraged to take every opportunity that came along. Whether it was singing, whether it was in the arts, whether it was participating in sport, whether it was participating in the classroom with the teachers. So I took those opportunities. And that helped me create what I think has been a decent life, both for me and my family. Some people may think, okay, you weren't rich, I wasn't rich. Other people have other barriers to overcome. Listen carefully to this young man and watch. I wasn't ready. I had no 
arms and her legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide uh, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is waiting for other people to come down. Here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? There were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms legs, I wish I had arms legs, I wish I had arms legs, because I wish I could help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple of key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am I going to be if I can't even hold my wife's hand? It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. There's a young man who was born massively physically disadvantaged. No arms, no legs, just what he called a chicken's foot, a chicken's claw, uh, one foot. And when he was eight or nine, he just wished he had arms and legs. He just wanted arms and legs. But then as he grew up more, he realised that, well, this is my life, this is what I've got. And I'm going to be really positive about it. And use what I've got to make my life into a good life. And he's done that. He's taken opportunities. He's been really, really positive. He fishes, he swims, he can play football, he can, uh, and he lectures to people, to young people like yourselves, about being positive about what hand you are dealt when you are given life. The next one's similar, but slightly different. Listen to this young man's story. John Bramlett is a bright young man with a head full of ideas, concepts, and bits of memory that amount to stories he's learning to tell with pen and paper. His dream demands a lot of work and a lot of reading, but these days, reading isn't so easy for John. Seems our budding author has a story of his own. Whenever, whenever I first lost my sight, I was really angry. I, I, I was so angry, I wouldn't even admit that I was angry. I was angry at everything. I had the world, my, my life, it seemed like. It seemed like everything that I, I don't know, was important was, was sort of taken away. I, I couldn't leave the apartment alone. I um, couldn't read anymore. I couldn't write anymore. Basically, the type of person that would always have a book. You'd always have a, you know, like, like a paperback novel in your back pocket. And, but whenever my sight went, I, I couldn't, you know, I had, I had to relearn how to read in a new way. And, you know, I wanted something that I could really get my hands on. And, and I remember my mom painting when I, when I was young and how calm it made her. And I'm just so angry at the time. Anything that sounded like it was calm and it sounded like a great thing. I had thought about painting before, but I, I, um, I, don't, I don't know, it might make some hard to say, but I, I never thought I'd be any good at it. And then when I lost my sight, I thought, well, if I'm no good at it, I, don't know, I won't have to look at it anyway, so I might as well give it a try. slightly different. He wasn't born blind, he became blind. And he didn't, wasn't about wishing I had this, wishing I had that. He just got cross. He just got angry. He'd been born with eyesight, his passion was reading, and his eyesight was taken away from him. In a way, what he did 
with absolute determination to originally get rid of his anger, he started to paint. I quite like his little saying, I was no good at it, he didn't have to look at it. And he's become a really well-known artist in the States. He makes quite a bit of money from his art work. But that took real determination. So again, a young person with real challenges. Bigger than the challenges that I suspect any of you facing here. We've all got your eyesight. But he's done something about it. He's taken control of the life that he's been given. Here's a, another one. Again, very different. Very different. What this chap, young fella, he, he's, um, he's actually doing a speech to introduce President Obama to his school. Just play 30 seconds of what he says. He's now the school student president. I am honored to have been chosen to speak before my classmates, as well as the students across America today. Over the past three years, I have taken advantage of every academic, extracurricular, and community opportunity that has been presented to me. As I reflect, a scholar expressed disappointment within my writing and challenged me to do better. Being reassigned to another class wasn't an option. After that experience, I was determined to excel. Therefore, I managed to succeed within the advanced placement class by maintaining focus along with using a setback as constructive energy. Okay, sometimes it's difficult to pick out what you're saying. But basically, he couldn't write. He really struggling to write. And he was being spoken to by his teacher to move him down a class. And he said, hang on a minute, I'm not having that. And he said, I'm going to take every opportunity, academic, extracurricular, sports and clubs and what have you, and community. And I'm going to change this. And he did. And now he's the star pupil introducing the President of the United States, not just to his school, but that was being televised right across uh, the USA. And then the last clip. I could say this next bit to you. What I'm going to show you now, but I'm going to get President Obama to say it to you. President Obama, I love him or hate him, he is the most powerful man in the world at the moment. Just listen to the words he uses when he's addressing uh, these young people. I'm here because I want to talk with you about your education and what's expected of all of you in this new school year. I've given a lot of speeches about education, and I've talked about responsibility a lot. I've talked about teachers' responsibility for inspiring students and pushing you to learn. I've talked about your parents' responsibility for making sure you stay on track and you get your homework done and don't spend every waking hour in front of the TV or with the Xbox. I've talked a lot about your government's responsibility for setting high standards and supporting teachers and principals and turning around schools that aren't working, where students aren't getting the opportunities that they deserve. But at the end of the day, we can have the most dedicated teachers, the most supportive parents, the best schools in the world, and none of it will make a difference. None of it will matter unless all of you fulfill your responsibilities. Unless you show up to those schools, unless you pay attention to those teachers, unless you listen to your parents and grandparents and other adults and put in the hard work it takes to succeed. And that's what I want to focus on today. Pretty clear message. And you've got the teachers, you've got the facilities, you can all see, you've all got arms and legs, so it's down to you, it's not down to me, I can't make your life good or bad, it's not down to who you live with at home, they can't make your life good or bad, it's 
down to you being determined, being positive, and taking opportunities. If you can do that, the chances are your life will be a good life, rather than a bad one. It's down to you.